Welcome back, Your Grace, and let me show you around your fantasy kingdom. Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor, and I was thinking about getting dressed up for this very special occasion, but instead of that, let's not waste any time and look at Unity's brand new Fantasy Kingdom demo, which is suitable for Unity 6 and URP with all of the new features. And we'll take a look at all those today, including the GPU resident draw, GPU occlusion culling, adaptive probe volumes, the new lighting features, and a few new things that are integrated in Unity 6. So what you can do is you can navigate to the Unity Asset Store and you will find the Fantasy Kingdom in Unity 6 URP demo. You can add this to your assets and open up in Unity. This does run on mobile devices too and this does actually use Cinti's Fantasy Kingdom Asset Pack which you can also find on the Unity Asset Store and it uses Speed Tree for all of the vegetation and tree resources in there. So you will open up in Unity 6 and you will get the new package manager, which you can find is a better layout now. You'll get the Fantasy Kingdom demo and you can just click to add this to your current project. It may bring up a warning which says, do be careful because it will import project settings, but because this is a fresh project, it's absolutely fine to use this as it is. So just flick through the steps and then go to the demo scene. If you need to navigate to the demo scene, you can click at the top and go Fantasy Kingdom and load demo scenes. If not, you can find that in Scenes and Demo. And now you can see we can navigate around this giant world that's in this project. And even when we press play, you'll notice that we can actually navigate around this scene as if almost like an RTS style. We can use the scroll wheel to zoom the camera in and out and we get a fogging at the top of the camera. We can actually move to sides of the screen up or down and we can move as long as we don't go outside the bounding of the game. You can move the camera around on the position that it is by holding the right mouse button but you may need to press C to do the free look for the camera so you could free look around and give this some more movement. I also like to use my own ghost camera so we can take a fly around this scene and take a look at some of the assets and lighting that are used throughout it because I think it's a nice way to navigate it much more easily if you don't want the RTS style and I will be making a tutorial with a new input system how to make something quick and easy like this and you can see all the speed tree based vegetation here the custom shaders with the falling leaves there's some birds and things that fly around there's custom shaders for water and other things in the background the big water assets you can see it's got baked lighting all the different assets from the Cinti packages it's got fog render features for the height based fog and the things in the background and post processing and it also incorporates GPU resident draw to increase performance when you've got thousands and thousands of objects on screen because of course this is suitable for mobile too. And because this is Unity 6, be sure to check out Unity's brand new toolkit bundle which has 23 assets with a 97% reduction. I've got a video all about it and I'll leave it in the description below. And do be sure to also check out my Patreon to get over 225 different scripts, assets, and projects and what we're going to do is actually look over the desktop pipeline asset which you can find in the urp and settings folder and this is suitable they do have one for mobile you can see that gpu at resident draw is enabled when it's got instance drawing so all you need to do to enable this is literally make sure that instance drawing is enabled and that just means that it takes some load off the cpu when you've got lots and lots of assets like in this scene and it pushes that to the gpu to make better performance so it's something that you want to test out for your scene now if you check out the mobile version there is the small mesh screen at pixel and that is upped a little bit and this also increases to help performance with how it renders all the objects in the scene and you can see on the mobile low that it also increases this to 2 and it does still have GPU resident draw enabled. You can see that there is a GPU occlusion culling because if you imagine when we've got all these objects, yes, we've got things like frustrum culling that everything that we can't see won't be rendered. But to explain occlusion culling, but more specifically GPU occlusion culling, we have, say we have this object here, this wall, we shouldn't be able to render the things in the background because the camera can't see it unless we go past it. With traditional occlusion culling, we'd have to bake this out manually. 
but with GPU occlusion culling, as long as GPU resonant draw is enabled, it will mean it will automatically detect that there's geometry in the way and won't render the things in the background to make performance better. And you can see the upscaling filter uses the new spatial temporal post-processing, and that does suggest that when the filter is used, when the rendering scale is below one, it will upscale the performance. So let me show you, if I take this scale down, as you can see, when I move this, we'll start getting artifacting on the screen and they will upscale from a lower resolution and make it look higher resolution to improve quality whilst keeping performance at the best it can be. So for desktop, this was set at 0.5, but something for mobile, it's set to 0.7 and mobile low is set around the same. And on the lighting tab, we've got the light probe system as the adaptive probe volumes because you can use the traditional light probes if you want to. But as long as you set that, you can set your memory usage of what you want that to be and the resolutions. Now, if I select one of the adaptive probe volumes and zoom all the way out, you can see that it sets a bounding box around the area that we want to produce light probes rather than again having to place this manually. So it takes away some need to do manual adjustments and you can set and choose where you want the override of the probe spacing to be. You can set the size, the scale, whether you want global or locally, and you can override settings, but you can also go to the lighting tab and go to the adaptive probe volumes tab in there, and you can set where you want the baking set to be, what scene it should be in, the probe scale if you want global settings. This scene does have post-processing for tone mapping, bloom. It does have the adaptive probe volume new options, to be able to adjust some settings globally, color adjustments, and vignette. And if you did notice in my scene, a lot of the rivers and stuff are red because I was just messing around, but you can pretend there's been a big battle and that's what's happened. If you look into the background, you can see that it uses the cube map fog and the height-based fog so we can get some edging at the top, especially when we zoom into the scene. And you can see if I look at the lighting setup, it uses a one directional light to cast the shadows and things on here. As you can see, when I turn it off, it has no direct lighting and shadows anymore. It just includes the bake lighting. Then if we take a quick look at the baking, you can see that it doesn't use any real time lighting. It uses the baked global illumination with the baked indirect, it uses the progressive GPU light mapper, some regular settings on there, and it does use high compression along with a default medium preset for generating this. Then if we look at some of the river or water assets that are based on the terrain, you can see that they're made by this pond material which uses shader graph, it uses a normal map to create the style of the ripples, then you can use change the ripple scale, the speed, the color, the depth, and things that are going to affect the look of the water. So it's a nice little shader and the river also uses a water stream effect with the similar style settings. So do be sure to check out this demo on the Unity Asset Store and let me know if you find this useful or if there's any other things that I've missed out on. Do check out Unity's brand new Unity 6 Toolkit bundle on the Unity Asset Store and I have a video showing all of the assets in there and it's a 97% saving on assets worth over $1,000. Do be sure to come and check out my Patreon too to get over 225 different scripts, assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else. A big thank you to everybody who comes to watch the video, massive thank you to Peter Steiner, Verishutha and Jennifer for their amazing support. Thank you to everybody else for coming to watch the video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.